Hi, and welcome to Studio 2 TV. I'll be your host, Holly. And I'm Hannah. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about mental health. Now, you might be wondering, what is Studio 2 TV? Who are we? What do we do? Studio 2 is a community arts centre which allows us to learn new skills and express our creativity. Studio 2 offers a lot of opportunities for young people to have their voices be heard. And we interviewed a few of our young people and our workers. Let's see what they had to say. Hello, my name's Ruma and I am a drama facilitator and youth worker here in Studio 2. I really love working in Studio 2 because I think the young people really make the job. I think the young people that come here are just the best young people in Derry and I really, really enjoy working with them. Uh, I really enjoy working in Studio 2 because every day is different. Uh, we have a wide ranging group of young people and they're all fantastic. At the minute, for this short film, we're working on the CLEAR project, which is a project about mental health. We're delighted to be involved with the CLEAR project and here in our Creative Youth and Creative Minds project. Uh, it's so important that we create vehicles for our young people to talk positively about their mental health and also about the issues that affect them. The young people have come up with some really good ideas and sessions about mental health and they're all really forward thinking. Any of the youth engagement that uh, I'm involved in, I always like to bring in an element of mental health because I think it's so important for young people uh, in this day and age with the pressures of social media family life and school. You're seeing all these things on social media, like you need to look like this, and you need to be like this, and your life needs to be perfect. But I think that puts a lot of pressure on young people because they're unrealistic images. So we do our best to try and keep them on the, the good side of mental health. It's always uplifting. Like even if you're having a rough day, you can always come in and someone somehow will find a way to put a smile on your face. I just, as well, it's just a lovely place to be. I go to Studio 2 because I have far too much energy and I need some way to release it and Studio 2 is far better than all the other youth clubs I am not being paid to say that. I think Studio 2 is different to everyone else just because the staff are so much more welcoming. I'm not saying all our youth clubs aren't but it's just such a nice facility here and I enjoy it. Studio 2 it's helped turn my mental health around all that stuff. Made me see make new friends, see old friends, have good times, good crack. It's definitely brought my mental health around. It wasn't the best of times before I came here. My ma signed me up and just said she's going to get me on some stuff, help me turn around. So I, it actually has helped. Today we're joined here by Karen Lowe. How are you Karen? What's the crack? I'm very well, thank you. It's nice to be here. So Karen, would you mind telling us a wee bit about yourself and what you do? Right, so my name's Karen Logue and as I said, myself and my husband run a fitness studio down in Springtown. So we first started off, like we just first started off with a couple of people and then we're open now nearly 10 years and we, we try to help people get into fitness but we find a lot of our clients, they're down there not just for getting fitter, it's for their mental health. So that we hour that they're exercising, that's their space, that's what they do. And then my clientele that would come on to me is people that's looking to make themselves feel better because they might be a bit overweight or they want to just make themselves feel better because they've been eating badly. They just want to make healthier choices. So I run the nutrition side of things and then my husband runs the exercise classes. So we have classes six days a week and I book camps and just all different types of exercises. It must be so rewarding knowing that your job helps to make such a positive change in so many people's lives. Um, and I know you work with adults, but do you think mental health is an important topic for young people to discuss? Definitely. I think it's vital because Especially whenever I was growing up, it was something, the word mental was so negative. It was used as an you're mental. Like if anything was wrong with you or what they say wrong with you, like if you were feeling down or you don't want to go to talk to somebody because the word mental was such a, a bad word. Whereas now mental health is something that needs to be looked at. It needs to be understood. It needs to be like young people need to feel it. They can come and talk to somebody. It doesn't, it's very hard to talk to somebody that's close to you. And I can even my own family would be like that. Um, like my daughter is nine and we were just talking about it. I try to be very open with her because in schools they do talk about mental health and I try to make it like a something she can talk to me about. And she said, um, Mommy, last year there was something I really wanted to talk to you about, but but I didn't. And she did tell me then during the week what it was. It was something very, very silly. But I said, why did you feel that you couldn't? She said, because I don't want to hurt your feelings. So, you know, it wasn't that she couldn't come to me. It was it was just different things. But I do think that 
young people definitely need to talk more about it and and understand that it's not it's not a negative thing. Every single person I do believe suffers with some kind of mental health issue. You no, know, doesn't have to be a, a big big something that's impacted massively in the, in their life. But even if you're feeling a wee bit down, just talk to somebody. You know, and letting young people know that you can just talk to your friend or you know. But definitely, I do believe that it's something in young people that it definitely should be out there and talked about more. So, see personally, what advice would you give to someone who is struggling with their mental health? For me personally, getting out and about really helps me. See, walking, it really, really helps me. Um, just being out in the fresh air. And just, um, and again, I was talking to my daughter about this because I'm, I'm so aware that they bring it up in schools so much now. And the, so the, the five steps, so the, the word magic. So and I always try to go over them uh, with her. But being in the industry, we're in health and fitness. Being active is just something that I really try to promote out there. And I try to tell people that exercising doesn't need to be overwhelming. Uh, you know, if, some, if I say to somebody, I want you to, to come down to our boot camp, oh, no, I couldn't do that. I love swimming, though. No, somebody said, right, let's get you swimming. You know, doing something that they that they really like, and then they would they would find that that helps. But definitely, I find myself, and just seeing it in so many of our clients, that exercise really does um, help with your your mental health and coping with it. Definitely talking, talking is just and just reaching out and maybe even just sending a wee text or meeting up with somebody for a coffee on them days that you're you're just not feeling yourself. And just knowing that you you have somebody there, somebody that a safety net, just somebody that you, that you can go in and talk to is is also really good. Because again, when I was growing up, you, you didn't want to talk to anybody. So as long as somebody knows there's somebody there for them that they can go and talk to or go to walk with. But as far as tips, keeping yourself active and knowing that it's okay to feel the way you do and just be present in the way you feel at that time. Try to understand it and that you're normal, that it's, that it's okay to feel the, the way that you're you're feeling and that you will get through it. That's really great advice, Karen. Um, on this project, we've been looking at the five steps to well-being. Do you think that's a good place for young people to start talking about mental health? Definitely, because you can break it down into, so, into them sections. You know, like that's the way I try to teach far is the, the word magic. So your mindfulness and being active and uh, like being kind and stuff like that. So I do think it, it's a good a good idea to go through the steps, but to let people understand that it doesn't have to be all the steps at the one time. You can just take one of them. Like even something as simple as just being kind to somebody that day, you'll get more out of that. That will make you feel better rather than the person that you've maybe give something to or, or give advice to or whatever it is. You know what you've done a, a good thing. So it's made you feel better. So instantly, uh, the, you know, you'll have that feel good factor and just, you know, say the, the activity and you're just being mindful of, of who you are and what you're feeling and things like that, it's, uh, the five steps are really, really helpful. I really do believe that they are because you can just take one at a time and just go through them, you know. So I, and like for me too, one of the big things that really helped me is I love cooking, but I never did like years ago. So finding an interest that, that I was really, really not good at, but something that kept my mind active in them days that it was just wandering, you know, wandering into them places that you don't even want to go to and then just bringing yourself back and they, and they where you're at now, maybe <laughs> making bread or whatever it may be. But that really helped me too, is just being and doing things that I like. So definitely five steps are, I think they are fantastic, definitely. So um, the more important question here, have you listened to any of the episodes of our podcast? I didn't. I didn't. You should definitely give a few of the episodes a listen. I think it'll be like really helpful and like insightful about young people's mental health. And we all had like a lot of fun like making it. Um, so sure, before you go, uh, why don't we see what some of the young people had to say about it? Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for coming on and talking to us. You're very welcome. Hi, welcome to the Spell with Hay podcast. My name's Ryan. My name's Reese. My name's Shane. 
So a typical episode of Spolite Podcast, we'll usually bring someone on who's an expert in a certain field and we'll interview them. On the Studio 2 podcast, we look at topics such as the negative effects of drugs and alcohol and how exercise and health eating can make your mental health way better. And then we'll have a just for laughs section, you know, they lighten up the mood. And I usually host that part because I'm just a comedian. I like doing Spolite because it gives me loads of opportunities in the community to help out wherever I can. So, Spell of is good for me because it provides a confidence boost and teaches me how to um, communicate with people outside of a screen and it helps me to learn about camera work and like audio and stuff. So if you're interested in checking out the Spell of Tape podcast, you can check us out at Spotify and Apple Music. Well done, the Spell of Tape podcast. That's such a good idea. Yeah, it's so important to talk about mental health these days, especially with young people. Uh, it can be a very heavy and hard topic for a lot of people to actually talk about, so it's very good to have it there, you know? Yeah, I've listened to the Spill the Tape podcast, and my favourite section is their Just for Laughs section. What's Just for Laughs? It's this part of their episode where they play a game or they just have a bit of fun, because mental health can be such a heavy topic to talk about, and it can really like weigh down on you. So I think it's great that they just include a bit of light and fun in their episode. I wish we could have something like that on our episode. Yes, we can. <gasps> Join us while we play Chubby Bunny for our version of Just for Laughs on our episode. I'm Aaron. And I'm Reggie. And this is Chubby, Chubby Bunny. Bunny. <laughs> Chubby Bunny. Chubby Bunny. Chubby I got day four. That means I'm better at eating marshmallows. <laughs> I think we all had a bit too much fun playing Chubby Bunny. <laughs> it did definitely get wee back in bed, but it was great fun. Hi. <laughs> thank you so much for watching our Studio 2 TV episode, and thank you to The Clear Project for helping to make this happen. Hopefully this isn't the end of Studio 2 TV, and we'll be back with more. See you later. Bye! Bye.